Hey guys, this is John from The Lucky Needle, and today I'm doing a little test video on my new camera, the Sony A7S. It's supposed to be a really great camera, so let me know what you guys think about the difference in video quality between this one and some of the other videos I have out in the past. I got this camera from Craigslist for a really great deal, and it got me thinking because a lot of you guys ask me questions about you know, do I need to buy all of these tools up front and make, you know, kind of a big investment when I'm starting out in upholstery? And the answer is no, you don't. And that's one of the reasons I love upholstery so much is because you don't have to make a huge investment in equipment before you can get started. You're really just able to collect the tools depending on the different jobs that you're doing. And over the years, I've bought a lot of my tools on Craigslist. Just for example, I bought the first sewing machine I ever bought was on Craigslist. The one you see in the videos, I got that for a great deal. I got this camera on Craigslist for almost half price of what you would pay if you bought it in the store. I got this computer behind me that I used to edit the videos on Craigslist. This toolbox right here I got on Craigslist. Even this mic that I use to get you guys the great audio for these videos, I bought that on Craigslist as well. And I got all of these for a great price. And I thought it would be an awesome idea to show you guys some tips that I use to find great deals on Craigslist. Stick around and I'm going to show you exactly what I do. All right, so in a minute, we're going to jump over to the computer and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a couple points that I want to bring up before we do that. And that is one of the things that I'm looking for when I'm shopping around on Craigslist and I see something that I want, I'm always looking at how many days that ad has been up. Because if that ad has been up for a couple hours and you contact that person, chances are that they're not going to be very motivated to sell at a cheaper price yet. So you got to keep that in mind. That's one of the things that you can, you know, kind of gauge on how much leverage you have to really negotiate a better deal. If that thing has been up there, whatever it is that you're looking for, has been up for, you know, 10 days, more than that, 14 days, two weeks, sometimes a month, if you ever see that, that usually means if the item is still available because a lot of times people are lazy and they don't take their ads down but if the item is still available after that long that's going to be pretty good for you because you're going to have uh, some nice negotiating you know leverage there because chances are that they haven't been able to sell whatever it is at the price that they're asking for so you're going to be able to come in and get it for a good deal Theoretically, this doesn't always work, but this is, you know, a, a tip that works for me. Another thing is you want to look at actually how many of whatever it is that you're looking to buy is available on Craigslist. So let's just say, for example, you're looking for a sewing machine and there's only two sewing machines available on Craigslist. It may be a little harder to negotiate a deal because there might be more people out there trying to buy it. And the same goes the other way. If you're looking for a sewing machine and in your area there's 30 sewing machines available on Craigslist, well, this is going to be good for you because you get to pick, you know, which one you want and you can try and find the best price because for sure out of all those, there's going to be a good deal somewhere. And the third point that I want to bring up, and it's the most important point that I can bring up, and I really can't stress this enough, and this goes, honestly, this point, it goes beyond just finding deals on Craigslist and it really goes into everything and that is that the list price is not the final price that you can get this item for that people are selling it for it's not even what they're expecting I mean think about it when you put something up for sale you always put it for the price that you in the best case scenario you would you would like to get it but really you're looking to get it, you know, you're looking to sell whatever it is here. It's the same way. So if you just come in on Craigslist and you're like, yeah, I'll give you whatever it is that you're asking for for that product, that guy's going to say, heck yeah, come get it right now. And he's going to be super happy. But the problem is you left money on the table. And this goes across the board for not just on Craigslist. I mean, it goes 
whenever you're buying things from your your suppliers at work if you're trying to get paid more you know I feel like most people are scared to ask for a better deal and that's something that especially you know if you're gonna be in business doing this you should you need to learn to get over that because you always got to try and find the better deal you always got to negotiate you got to get that price down so that you can make more money because I'm not trying to give you guys a financial lesson here but the one of the best ways to make more money is to not spend what you already got and here's the thing whenever you ask for a better deal the worst thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna say no nobody's gonna die nobody's gonna hate you nobody's it's not a big deal if you ask for a better deal the best thing that's gonna happen is you get a better deal the worst thing is nothing so don't worry about it all right let's jump over to the computer and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about all right so we're gonna go ahead and head on over to Craigslist here all right so let's just for example we're gonna search for a sewing machine and uh, anytime I'm looking for a sewing machine on Craigslist you want to search for industrial walking foot sewing machine seems to come up with the best results that way you don't have to search through a thousand sewing machines that aren't a walk-in foot all right so we have quite a few results that turned up here in the area but even still we gotta sort through some of these that aren't exactly what we're looking for like this kinda home machine here stuff like that um, so it looks like there's this one here but this is a brand new machine and that's another thing you have to worry about or not worry about but it's another thing you have to look out for when you're on Craigslist is there's a lot of dealers on here posting up their ads which there's nothing wrong with that I mean it's it's good to know that this new machines available but it's not going to be the deal that we're looking for this looks like a probably a pretty good machine it's a imitation of the FAF 1245 which is a nice machine but let's say we're looking for something a little bit less than this so I'm going through here I'm looking this is a walk-in foot machine here and actually this one's pretty nice this uh, that's actually a really good deal for this machine here So let's see what else there is. We have this other walk-in foot machine here. You know, there's there's quite a few options, but uh, let's check out this console right here. Well, this looks like a decent machine here. Thirteen hundred dollars. You know, it's well. It says it's just serviced, and it does look from the picture like it's one of the older consoles. So it's probably a pretty good machine. So let's just say we decided, you know, this is one of the ones we want to check out. And honestly, if it was me, I would send emails or I would. I would contact every single one of these ads that we just saw that was something in the range of what we're looking for. So let's just say for example this guy $1300 on the console machine here. What you're going to do is you want to click on this reply button here and they're going to have either their email and sometimes they're going to have their phone number and it's going to say whether you can text or call them and I usually like to do this over text or email. It's a little bit easier that way and it also you know it's a little bit more comfortable to negotiate over email or text message rather than right there in person if it's something that you're not comfortable with yet so you can either click on this right here or you can copy and paste it into your your email but anyways what I would do is I would just write this guy an email saying hi is this machine still available 
And then I would just send this, and I would send this to any of these machines that I'm interested in buying that look like a good deal. And what's going to happen is they're going to either respond yes or no. And the reason you want to do this is because a lot of these machines, they're, or a lot of the ads up on Craigslist, sometimes they're old, and you just want to check to see if the buyer's still selling whatever it is you're looking for. And depending on how quickly they get back to you, that can be a sign of how motivated they are to sell. So basically what would happen if I was interested in buying this machine right here, this guy, he would email me back, hopefully right away or fairly soon, in, or over text message if we had the text message option here. And he says, yes, the machine's still available. And automatically right here, I can see that it says this post was posted about a month ago. So I know that this has been up for quite a while. And I'm guessing it's probably because this price, it's a little bit high compared to, you know, some of those other machines we were looking at there. But, I mean, it's, it's a really nice machine, so this could be a good deal here. So what I would do is I would pick a price and I would email them back. I would say, thank you for getting back to me. And then I would just uh, make an offer to them on the, through this email or the text message. I would say, would you be willing to take 850 or something like that? You know, I know it's kind of low, but one of the things I recommend doing is making an offer at a price that's a little bit, you know, below what you're comfortable asking for. And the reason... I recommend doing that is not because you're expecting to get that number that you asked for but you're expecting to get somewhere in between that and this is just kind of you know the game that goes on on Craigslist between people that sell things and people that buy things and you know this is a game that's been going on for thousands of years it's called the art of making a deal so um, you're going to ask this guy for 850 and you're going to send that off. And then later on, you know, this guy's going to come back and, and who knows, maybe you're going to get lucky because this machine has been up here for a month already and this guy just wants this freaking piece of shit out of his house and his wife's bitching at him. And who knows, you never know, maybe he'll he's ready to give it to his neighbor and he's just happy that... He's got somebody making an offer. You know, you never know what the situation is. So maybe he's going to come back and say, yeah, 850, come get it tomorrow. But more than likely what's going to happen is they're going to come back and they're going to say, no, I can't do 850, but, you know, can you do, you know, can you do $1,000, you know, or something like that. And then already there, man, you just saved yourself 300 bucks just by sending one little email and that's what I'm talking about and so from there it's really up to you if you want to try and squeeze a little more you know you can say ah, I can meet you you know at you know 950 or you know 975 or something like that this is the big the big one right here is where you make the get them to make the counter offer and then you can either try and go a little bit lower but already you know we'd be doing good right there if they came back with a thousand so that's how it is and really that's how easy it is to you know make deals on Craigslist and find good things like that. So just to prove to you exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you on this deal that I just did with the camera right here. I'm going to show you the emails that I made back and forth with the person and how easy it was to get you know an awesome deal on this camera. And you guys can do this with anything that you're looking for as well. Alright, so recently when I was shopping for this new camera, I found one on Craigslist that I liked was the model I was looking for. It was the Sony A7S. And you can see here that this is the conversation I had back and forth between the guy that was selling the camera. And he originally had this camera posted for $1,500, which is pretty good deal already because you can see right here that this camera retails for about two thousand nineteen ninety nine so this is basically what I said I said hi is the a7s camera still available he responded back pretty quickly 
He said, yes, the A7 is still available. I also have the wall power charger adapter if you would like to buy that as well. And uh, that actually, he had that up for sale on his ad too as a separate cost. I think he was asking, it was uh, $50 more for that. And then I responded, okay, cool. Would you be able to do $1,300 for the camera and the charger? So I'm asking him, you know, to do $200 less and also include that charger. And he responded back pretty quickly. He said, yeah, that works for me. Are you free sometime tomorrow? So he automatically was ready to, you know, go lower than the price he was asking for. Plus he was willing to throw in that extra charger. So I was really excited for this because $1,300 plus that charger, you know, you're talking close to half the price of, uh, of what I would have paid retail for this. And then uh, you can see here we met up later and we did the deal. So. so you can see here, this is the proof right here. I just did this recently. It works. Um, you just got to, you know, ask, ask for a better price because what do you have to lose? All right, so yeah, I understand that all of the stuff that you'll be buying on Craigslist, it is secondhand and it's used and it won't be coming with a manufacturer warranty and all of that other stuff. But if you can find things at the right price and you make sure that you know, you're not buying a piece of junk that's been abused its whole life, you can really find some great deals in my opinion. Maybe you're the kind of person, you know, that doesn't want to take that risk and wants to buy everything brand new. It's up to you. This works awesome for me and this is how I like to do things. So I figured this would be a good helpful tip for you guys. So I hope that helps and you guys can start finding some awesome deals on Craigslist and start building your collection of upholstery tools. Make sure you visit us at theluckyneedle.com and check out all the other great videos that we have on automotive upholstery.